purpose of this video is to review over uh, laboratory safety in the chemistry classroom. Now, just like in sports, uh, your uh, coach has you practice and practice so that when you get in a game situation, you will perform the way that you practice. Now, this is the same idea behind a laboratory setting. If you practice correct protocol and practice correct safe protocol, when you get into the lab, you will naturally perform that uh, safe protocol. And so we're going to review over the do's and don'ts in order to stay safe in a typical high school chemistry lab. And I know that you know a lot of this, so, but we'll review over it anyway. We always want you to wear proper eyewear, uh, wear the goggles, uh, do let your teacher know if you have contact lenses, and never go without um, your goggles in the lab if you have contacts. The worst possible thing you can do is to get a chemical in your eye when you have contacts in. That chemical can melt those contacts to your eyes. So always wear proper eye uh, safety um, glassware. Uh, your normal eyeglasses are not good enough. They have those sides where uh, chemicals can splash in. Wear the, the proper safety uh, glassware that's provided by your, uh, your teacher. You also, ladies, want to pull the hair back. You do not want your hair to fall into the Bunsen burner. Uh, you do not want it to fall into the chemical. So remember to always tie your hair back. Also, you want to wear uh, have footwear that covers the toes. We don't want to drop any kind of, of liquid chemical or uh, heavy equipment on the feet. So you want to have solid, um, hard-soled shoes, and you want them to cover your toes. No sandals. Also, do not bring any uh, bottled water or any gum or any candy into the classroom. Uh, you don't want to taste the chemicals. Uh, I will never ask you to taste the chemicals. The only time you will be asked to smell the chemicals will be using a fanning motion. I will show you in the lab, and that is when we do our esterification lab where we make esters. Uh, also, you are not allowed to take chemicals out of the lab. You are to do the designated experiments in the order that you are told by your teacher and you are to leave all the chemicals under the lab um, hood when you are completed. Again, my classes are fairly laid back. However, if you do want to get on Mrs. Owen's bad side, uh, horseplay. I never ever engage in horseplay or practical jokes in the lab. Not only are you putting yourself at risk, but you are also putting your classmates at risk. Never do any unauthorized experiments. Putting the chemicals um, in the wrong order can result in completely different chemical reactions, some of which will not be safe at all. We want you to avoid inhaling chemical fumes. I will not ever ask you to pipe it by mouth. Uh, that is an old, old um, procedure. We do have uh, pipettes that are graduated that will keep you safe. Uh, if there's any kind of uh, accident, no matter how trivial, uh, you burn yourself, uh, you spill a chemical, you're just worried you did something wrong, notify me immediately. We can take care of those situations extremely easily if we're notified. Also, make sure you read the labels and know what chemicals you're working with, what chemicals you have at your lab station. If you have any kind of lab incident, it's important to know what chemicals you're working with so we can properly treat you or clean up the spill. Another pet peeve is using the sink as a trash can. Please make sure that you do not use the sink to discard matches, filter paper, or any kind of insoluble solids. I will have waste jars available. And when you use chemicals, if you have any extras, do not return those to the original container unless I tell you to. Uh, I will have special containers for you to put that unused material. When you are heating a test tube, make sure that the test tube is not pointed at yourself or anyone else. If you overheat it, that chemical must go somewhere. We would like for it to avoid your face. Now, as crazy as it sounds, it is very important that you know that uh, when you mix chemicals together, many times it's important on which chemical you add to what. That's especially important in dealing with acids and water, especially uh, concentrated sulfuric acid. 
So when you are working with acids and water, you always add the acid to the water, never the water to the acid. The reason, if you add acid to water, you are taking a neutral substance and slowly making it acidic. While heat will be released, it will be a slow increase in heat and the chemical will not bubble over. If you take a, a container of acid and you start pouring water in that container, you are changing that chemical from a strong acid and you are making it a different pH. And you are doing that very quickly and it will release a lot of energy and as it releases that energy it must go somewhere and that may be your face so always add acid to water never water to acid if you forget come ask your teacher rather than trying to guesstimate what to do also you are never allowed to work alone in the lab you need to have a, an instructor present at all times and preferably a lab partner as well. Now it is also extremely important for you to be able to identify the locations of the following safety equipment in your lab. The fire extinguisher, the fire blanket, the eye wash fountain, the, fire, uh, the first aid kit, the fume hood, the safety shower, uh, where the broken glass should be placed, uh, your material safety data sheets, and your safety warning diamond. Uh, all of this material should be easily identified in your lab. You should be able to get a blank sheet of paper and draw out your lab and be able to locate each of these components. The eye wash fountain is set up in such a way that you can get a chemical out of your eyes immediately. We don't want you to wait until lunch or the last period if you get a chemical in your eyes. We want you to immediately run the water through the eye wash fountain and get that chemical out. Inform the teacher immediately and we will help you with this. Now my hopes are that we go over this material and that no incidents ever happen. But in that rare circumstance, if something was to happen, we do want you to understand where the equipment is and how to use it. We do have a chemical first aid kit in our lab, uh, and it is available for student use as needed. Uh, if blood is ever evident, stay away. We will let the victim apply his or her own bandage if they are able to. If there's blood on the floor or the lab, ben uh, lab bench, you need to let a trained personnel do the cleanup. I do have uh, body fluid disposable kits in my lab that would neutralize and clean up these situations. The fume hood is used for reactions that give off vapors that are extremely smelly or for avoiding various uh, vapors that um, could be uh, harmful to the lungs. So we do have uh, a dual-sided fume hood in our lab and this does allow students to work on either side of the fume hood and to pull the glass down and to be safe. We will be showing you how to use this in the lab. We also have a safety shower uh, that you will pull just like in the uh, photograph and it will uh, douse you with water if you ever get a major chemical on your body. It is located in the far back uh, right corner of the lab and is available if you ever need it. Here we have uh, some of the various uh, safety uh, symbols that you may run across in uh, a lab. Now, normally uh, we will review over the uh, lab procedure and any concerns a few days before the lab. And um, when you get your lab paper, you may see this. And it may say glassware hazard. And it will tell you that the glassware may be sharp or the glassware may be hot. Uh, if you see fire hazard, we could see this uh, when we use a Bunsen burner or if chemicals are flammable. Uh, heat hazard, if you're working with glassware or if you're working with burners or uh, hot plates. 
um, eye safety. Sometimes you'll see a triangle, and the triangle is a just a general safety rule. It's a reminder. There's no specific chemicals that are dangerous, but follow safety procedures. If we have chemical hazards where some chemicals may be dangerous to the skin, we'll have an indication. Or if we have chemicals that uh, could be dangerous for you to inhale. Um, biohazards, uh, you'll see this in microbiology labs when we're working with uh, microorganisms. Uh, the radioactive hazard, you'll see this when we do our nuclear chemistry unit and we, we work with our Geiger counters. Um, animal hazards would be if you're working with live organisms, uh, dissections, uh, so you can see a variety of uh, safety symbols. Now as you work with the chemicals um, in the lab, the chemicals will be diluted to the needed strength for the lab, but they are real chemicals. They are, you are doing college level labs and so you do need to take proper uh, precautions. And so each of the chemical containers will have one of these uh, diamond shaped structures on them. The blue area will indicate our health hazard. The white is any kind of specific hazard where if we have flammability or we have uh, any kind of, of poison issues. Here we have reactivity with yellow and here we have fire hazard with uh, the red. Now they can go from one being very safe to work with up to three or four which would be extremely dangerous. Now if you ever have an acid spill we will clean that up with a base. The base we will use will be a sodium bicarbonate wash. Uh, basically that's a baking soda powder that has been mixed with water. If we have a base spill, we will clean that up with an acid. Uh, I will be using uh, vinegar as a 3% acetic acid, and that will help neutralize the base. Both of these will be available on lab days where acids and bases will be present for our lab procedures. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for you to wear your safety glasses, your aprons, and your gloves. We do have the various gloves that are needed, whether they are the heat resistant gloves or the various chemical gloves that are needed per uh, lab setup. Now, there are worse pictures than these than we can show you, so let's never let this happen. Again, uh, by our spending time reviewing over this material, this is to ensure that none of these issues will ever occur in a lab. And after over 20 years of teaching uh, chemistry, the worst uh, issues I've ever had happen was an occasional cut or, or burn. Uh, but we've never had any issues like this, and I would like to keep that record uh, as it is. So let's look at a few procedures. We're going to start with how do we pour a liquid. Now you're going to notice that here we have some type of reagent bottle. And here we have our stirring rod and we have a beaker. And you'll notice that we are pouring the liquid down the stirring rod. And the reason we're pouring it slowly down the stirring rod is to keep splattering from occurring. So this is one procedure for taking a chemical from a reagent bottle and moving it over to a beaker. Another procedure that we have is to use our designated pipettes where we can pipe out the exact amount out of our reagent bottle and move it directly and slowly pipette it into our beaker. Both procedures are allowed to be used. Now here we have a setup for filtration. We do a great deal of filtration in the lab. So we have our funnel with our filter paper. We will show you how to, to fold the filter paper in lab. Uh, we have our, our ring stand and our iron ring, and you'll see that we have our clay triangle. The one thing I want you to notice is it's hard to see in this picture, but this part of the uh, funnel is right up against the beaker. And what that does is being right up against the beaker, again, it's allowing the uh, fluid to have a small stream moving down the beaker without splatter. We will be demonstrating this procedure in lab as well because our second lab of the year we will be doing a filtration lab. 
When we measure a liquid, we do need to be aware of this dip structure known as the meniscus. And so when we read our fluid, we want to read from the bottom of the meniscus. We do not want to read from these top areas. So you will need to kneel down and get eye level when you are pouring and measuring out liquids using a graduated cylinder. In addition, graduated cylinders are more accurate than beakers when we're measuring liquids. And even more accurate than a graduated cylinder is a pipette. So the thinner the uh, container is, the more accurate we're going to have for our reading. Now when we use our balances, the first thing you will need to do is to make sure all of the riders or the weights are moved to the zero and you need to make sure that we have zeroed out our scale. If your scale is not zeroed out, you need to call your teacher over to help you do so. Once we have placed our object on our balance, we will then move our riders over until we get our pointer back in the center area. Now once we get that back in that center area, and so when we talk about the center area, and this is that line we're talking about, just right there in that area, then we will read and we'll start with our largest number. So we'll say that's 200. And it looks like you have to make sure these are directly on there. So 230... 6.5 is what this looks like. It's a little hard to read. Um, but make sure that you know how to use a balance. And if you have any difficulty, uh, call me over and we'll work on this. Uh, this right here is litmus paper. Red litmus paper turns blue in the presence of a base. And blue litmus paper turns red in the presence of an acid. So what we would do is take a watch glass we would place our filter paper or even our pH paper on that watch glass. We'll dip, uh, take a um, glass uh, stirring rod, dip that in the chemical we want to test, and then we touch our test strip while our test strip is in our watch glass. Now what this does is it allows us to take our chemical and put it in contact with our strip but the chemical never comes in contact with our, our uh, fingers. If we were to take one of these strips and dip it into the chemical, it would be soaking that chemical directly up and touching our fingers. So this is the proper way for using indicator paper. Now the Bunsen burner is the most common piece of equipment that we use. And so here we have our burner, and we have our gas valves right along here. And you can turn and adjust the valves here. Um, any valves that are located along here, you should leave alone. Uh, you do want your burner to burn out with a blue flame. Blue flames burn cleaner. That means no soot buildup, and they burn hotter. Now you will turn your gas flame on. As you do so, you will have your striker, and you will strike right over here. It should light. If you try it two to three times and you cannot get this to light, turn the gas valve off. Failure to do so is causing a large gas bubble to build up here. And if you get a large gas bubble and then you bring fire next to it, you will have an explosion. So you do want to be careful when using your Bunsen burner. We will be demonstrating the proper way to light the burner in lab. Uh, lab number two uses uh, the Bunsen burner and then we use them for the rest of the year. Additionally, you always need to have one student watching the flame. Occasionally, you may have a, an air bubble in the line and our flame could drop from here down to here. It doesn't take much more for that flame to go back up there and into the gas line and to explode. So if our flame ever drops and drops from here to here or disappears, don't panic. Just simply turn the valve off. And while this is the end of this safety video, this will not be the end of our safety training uh, for the year. Before each lab, we will review over the uh, safety procedures and cautions that are needed for that particular lab and never hesitate to call me over with any concerns that you have for yourself or your classmates on um, any safety issues. I am always available.